Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to build a dual patch feed for use with Q0100, um, the geostationary amateur radio satellite. The dual patch feed is in my opinion the easiest way to get going. It consists out of some metal plates and a tube that is used as a waveguide. The metal plates are basically one round plate um, that is used as a reflector and one plate that is shaped like a square with two um, cut off uh, edges and the tube is a normal 22 millimeter um, tube that is used for plummeting. The material can be um, brass or copper. Most of the kits you can buy today are brass and the tube is a normal copper tube. Uh, the connector we are going to use today is a normal end connector but you can also use um, normal standard SMA connectors. Um, you can make these plates your own. I've written a guide that shows how you can do it with easy tools or you can buy them on the internet. There are already Solot plates um, sold and also kits like these. My plates are made from a two millimeter uh, brass sheet, but you can go between 0 0.5 and three millimeters. I've also built um, feeds out of three millimeter um, plates and it's also no problem. Um, the, the other stuff we will need to solder these plates are just a bit of solder. This is normal solder. You can also use your um, electrician solder. Um, we use some flux. This is highly recommended because it's um, a bit easier. We use some normal scotch bright or steel wool or sanding paper and some um, in my case these are these are normal uh, I don't know the term um, the, the the stuff you put between the screw and the nut these have three millimeters in height and this is exactly the same um, height we need between the patch and the reflector and the tools we are using to get this going today is are just uh, normal common tools um, in my case there are no holes the holes for the connector are not drilled yet so we are going to use a center punch to center the hole a normal marker this one is a through hole marker but you can also use a normal marker um, a caliper so it's easier to to um, make uh, accurate um, marks on the plates. A small hammer. Normally, I think watchmakers use that size. A power drill and a blowtorch. We are also going to use uh, some alcohol to clean the parts but you can also use brake cleaner or warm soapy water uh, it's absolutely no problem um, the patch feed or the dual patch feed or the patch of the year as it is called by some guys was um, made and designed by mike willis um, with the help of rico dem besten from the netherlands and Paul aka UHF Setcom. Um, they have a very good documentation on the internet about the feed, how it works. 
it's it's very good and i will link it in the descriptions below so you can take a look at it okay now the the first step we will do before we are going to um, solder the plates is to to drill the hole the first hole in the um, patch itself this will um, then uh, that the the center pin of the connector of of our connector is going to be um, soldered in there and this is the first thing we will um, make today uh, I have here some documentation this is the site where UHF SETCOM um, has docu documented everything and I have made a guide where I show you the exact steps you need to assemble these I don't know the dimensions um, out of my mind so I'm going to read it here um, the first thing you have to to make sure is that the uh, the etched that the cutout edges of the patch itself are going to be on the left up side and on the right down side. Um, the patch is a left hand uh, polarized uh, patch feed so if you have um, that changed or if you make it the wrong alignment the feed is has the polarized polarization in the wrong side excuse me um, the best way to mark the 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 hole um, and this is a old machinist life hack <clears throat> is that you set the 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 reading in the caliper so the first um, the first measurement is on the x axis so from uh, left to right and we need a measurement of 24.75 millimeters here so if you never have um, dealt with a caliper i show it to you um, here you have the millimeters so here's 20 and here's 24 we need 24.75 and here this is called a uh, non use in germany i'm not sure if it's also called that in english so when we need to the point zero uh, the point 75 millimeters we um put this we slide the non use so the 75 like here um, is aligned with any line on the above uh, so this is set to 24.75 we can then hold the plate down here and hook the right side of the caliper in and slide it up a bit while pressing the other side of the caliper down um, here i'm not sure if you can see it but here is a scratch mark this is now the exactly the 24.75 from the right edge um, the measurement from the above side is 4.75 millimeters so we will set that here also 4.75 we slide it on this side and now we have um, a mark here I'm not sure if you can see it um, I'll take the pen and make a small dot here I hope this is uh, seeable better now and then we take our center punch the center punch is used so that um, you can uh, drill the hole a lot easier um, the center punch is the best way you use it is that you take it uh, straight in an angle so you can see the tip you align the tip with the mark then you um, 
um, straighten it up, take the hammer and yeah, punch it. And my great grandfather always told me um, if you punch it right, it's half the hole drilled. So we have a little mark here and we will now um, drill a hole in there. The connector, the inner connector of the, the N connector has a diameter of 1.3 millimeters. So we will take a drill that is about two millimeters. We don't want to, to be that accurate here. We take a two millimeter drill and put it in our drilling machine. <laughs> you should um, use quite a higher speed there. And I'm going to put this in a vise or lay it on top of a vise so that I don't drill into the table. Uh, you take the drill, you can set it into the hole and you should um, check that this is, is aligned in this side and that it's also aligned in this side and then you drill it. Uh, normally you should stand up and so that you can see it better but I will try it here so you guys can see what's going on here. Don't press too, too, too hard on it, it's only a small drill and uh, the speed of the drill, the revolutions per minute can be quite high here. Okay, it seems that the battery is empty. Okay, this is also empty. We'll check this battery. And do this again. Yeah, that went a lot better. Um, so it's good practice that you deburr the hole because when you when you drill it I don't know if you can see it there is are sharp edges on both sides um, with such a small hole it's um, quite hard to find the countersink um, a good um, a good way to get around this is just use a slightly larger drill So we have um, drilled a 2.05 millimeter hole in this and we will countersink it with a 4 millimeter drill. Don't um, countersink it too much, just a little bit. And that's the deal. The first hole is drilled now. Um, the second hole that we will drill is the the matching hole in the reflector where we put the the insulation of the the center insulation of the connector through um, for this we are going to lay the reflector on the um the, the patch on the reflector and we have to check that it is um, aligned correctly if your tube goes in quite um, easily, you can stick your tube in. Uh, mine is not going in that easy. I have a second tube here. It's also not going in that easy. I will just um, try to uh, align it with my eyes and with my fingers. Yeah, that should do. That's good enough for me here. Now I take 
the marker again, the through hole marker and mark the center hole here. Um, you can also go ahead and put in the smaller drill here as a pilot hole. Hold down the um, plates, set the drill to through the hole and start the drilling machine. You don't have to, to drill um, completely through the reflector here. If you, I don't know if you can see this, um, here's a spot. Um, it's, it's like the a center punch and you can drill now, uh, you can drill the two millimeter hole in there and then go for the bigger hole. So, um, I'm going to measure the, the diameter of the insulation. This is four millimeters and I will also measure this drill. This is also four millimeters, so we will go for that. <coughs> Hold it down and drill it in. Now we are going to, to countersink this hole. Um, for that we are taking a bigger drill. This is a 6.5 mm, millimeter drill. And countersink it on this side and on that side. Okay. Now the connector should um, should fit into the, the hole here and it does and if you want you can uh, align the connector on the, the back side uh, with the plate in the front but um, I will um, cut the, the insulation here off that I don't need I use a normal cutter knife and cut it in from every side you can also um, turn the connector on the back so that the insulation is cut from every side and to, then you can um, put it away now we are going to put the patch on it and now we can check out how we are going to to um, set the 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 angle of the connector so it don't look that bad I've I've doing this here the first time on the other patches I made uh, I did do it then we again take our um, marker and we mark every hole in the connector. You can also um, just drill two holes or if you do a sloppy job on drilling all four holes, you can um, be sure that only two holes will um, fit. I've marked all four holes here and I will try to drill them now. Um, again we take our center punch and the hammer. We try to put the the center punch exactly in the in the markings and then we punch it. We do this for all four holes. And number four. And now we are going to drill a 2.05 millimeter hole, or better said, um, four 2.505 millimeter holes into the reflector. 
um, because we're going to cut some threads in it um, a metric 2.5 millimeter thread yeah we I show you this how this is going it's totally easy to do we first uh, drill the four holes as we did earlier the four holes are drilled we are again using the four millimeter drill bit to countersink the holes and the front side And now we are going to cut the threads in it. Um, there are two ways uh, I'd recommend you are you are using a normal thread cutter like this here. This is an M2.5 um, machine thread cutter. Uh, there are cheap ones. There are expensive ones. You can use whatever you like and normally you put the cutter in here you have to check that the axes are exactly 90 degree on this side and on this side it's not that dramatic um, in this uh, project because the base material is very thin so you will not have much problem there but if you are going to cut threads in thick plates uh, you have to go perfectly th straight because the drill bit or the, the tap will uh, break easily uh, you can either cut the thread um, per hand or with a machine um, i will use the the hand drill for this you can or you should um, use the 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 low gear and you should also uh, use the setting for screwing so you have a coupling in there when it goes too hard the the chuck won't turn and you will not break the the thread cutter and um, we will set this to five I guess and then we will cut the threads in there um, yeah basically check that the drill the tab is quite uh, 90 degree aligned to the hole or to the plate and then you can cut the thread in if you're through you um, put in the reverse gear and you are pulling the thread cutter out and we are going to do this on all four holes and now the threads are in um, we have done the most work we're going to do now uh, we can now screw or mount the connector 
Um, we can mount it before soldering or after soldering. I am going to um, mount it now. And for that, we will put in the connector. And we will put in the screws. These screws are M um, 2.5 times 6 millimeter screws with a normal crosshead. <clears throat> so we are going to use a screwdriver and then screw in the screws. It is possible that um, some holes are not aligned correctly. Um, don't worry. Um, the best way to um, screw this in is that you don't um, uh, don't tighten it all the way at first, so that it can wiggle around a bit. And if you have managed to, to put in all four screws, you can start to, to um, tighten it. A best practice is that you are going to tighten the diagonal screws first and then the other two screws. Uh, for this project, it is uh, necessary that the screw heads don't um, look out on the, the back side. This will be the side between the reflector and the patch. And so we have to grind these screws down. Um, I'm going to use an electric powered angle grinder for this. You can also use a file or something else. Um, please uh, stay safe with uh, the angle grinder, it's kind of a, a dangerous tool. I'm working with this stuff all day, but um, you should be careful to not lose your fingers or stuff you maybe, you maybe need it in the future. Um, okay. Now we have done all the, the mechanical work here. Um, you can see here the, the grinding, if you do it with an angle grinder, make sure you don't, um, you don't grind into the reflector too much. Uh, this is just, these are just scratches. There is not going, uh, there is not much material grinded away here, but make sure you don't, um, Fuck something up and that you uh, take your time while working and stay safe. Okay, now that we have um, mounted our connector, we will prepare the parts for um, soldering. Um, take some scotch bright or steel wool and roughen up the surfaces around the, the middle hole. Also, um, roughen up the middle hole itself and the back side where the connector is. 
you can also um, take your time and polish the the parts i've seen a lot of uh, nice polished feeds online um, i won't do that because i just need it to work but if you want to make your feet shiny and nice go take the time and polish it we are also going to polish or do the same thing on the patch itself roughen up the the surface on the front side on the back side and also in the center hole and when you are finished you take your waveguide tube and do the same thing on the part where we are going to solder it make sure that you um, get off every ox oxide from the from the tube this is crucial because we need um, some good solder joints there if you are finished take some sort of cleaning solution I'm going to use alcohol here for cleaning but you can also use brick cleaner um, and or hot soap water this also works very well um, make sure that you have a good ventilation when you are working with um, chemical solvents and that you don't burn down your house we're going to clean the parts that we have um, that we have um, roughened earlier you see here there's a lot of dirt on the tube we are doing the same on the reflector the front side the back side and the hole in the middle and we are also doing this for the patch itself okay everything is clean now um, i'd recommend you are going to get rid of the soaked um, cloth you used for cleaning because we are going to get fire involved now and this is quite dangerous um, the next part can be a bit tricky we have to to put the tube inside the reflector and it depends on the measurements of the hole if it will go in easy or hard um, i prefer a press fit um, but if you want it to be uh, easier to slide it in you can also um, file the inner diameters up a bit um, but you have to clean it after the um, filing grinding process again I'd recommend a bit of a, a snug fit here so that everything stays in place um, if it's not going in easily don't use a hammer here in the back side because um, this copper is very um, thin or quite thin and if you bend it you will have a hard time um, fitting the LMB on the back side uh, there are a few met methods um, I am going to try and push it in um keep keep in mind that this part here can be very uh, sharp so don't try to press it in like this um, you can hurt yourself uh, also make sure that everything is aligned in the right angle 
here you see that this is um, not aligned quite well uh, you can align it first and then if everything is aligned well we are going to to try and press it in with a bit of help of some additional tools um, i'd recommend you use your vice and something a bit bigger than the uh, tube itself and you use some sort of um, sheet or cloth that you can put behind the the waveguide as protection um, I'm going to open the vise a bit so that the patch feet fits in the vise and also the 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 key or the distance you have will fit in the vise then i will uh, put a bit of cloth behind it make sure everything is aligned uh, horizontally then um, use your your um, in my case um, a wrench place it over the the hole and close the vice everything should help uh, hold here you can now check the alignment again and if everything is okay close the vice and the plate should be pressed in so the reflector is mounted on the waveguide now and we have to put it uh, in so that the waveguide is that the beginning of the waveguide is about 10 millimeters from the um, top side of the reflector this measurement is not that crucial but we are going to make it as accurate as possible so we just put it uh, on there a bit more. Yeah, that's good enough for us. Um, the next thing is that you want to uh, align the reflector as accurately as possible on the waveguide. So you will um, want to have this exactly 90 degrees angle. Uh, you can either use a small um, right angle or you can use a, a ruler like this one. Um, this has a 90 degree angle on here and when you put the feet on it and you watch in there you can see that there's um, light coming through so this means that this side needs to go up a bit you bend it up and check it again now it needs to come down a bit and for rechecking you can do this on the second side this axis looks good now we are going to test this on the other axis so turn the feet at 90 degrees and test it again here we need to come down a bit uh, looks quite good and then we recheck this side again here we need a bit up Yeah, this looks good now. Uh, we can put away the ruler 
and then we will uh, need something uh, like a paper towel or a cloth and we fold it together and then we are going to put it around the feet here so that we can um, put the feet in the in the vise and that we don't scratch or um, break anything. Uh, I'd suggest you lay the feet on the vise so that um, everything is kind of straight here then tighten the vise just a bit um, this there is not much force going to be applied on any part here we just want that the reflector plate is resting on the jaws of the of the vise and that the waveguide is being held a bit so that when the the material expands uh, nothing can um, change the angles we have here um, take your um, blowtorch or hot air station or whatever you're going to to uh, use for soldering uh, take your your solder and put away everything that is flammable like the alcohol we used to clean it um, now we're going to apply some flux on the, the area we are going to solder um, just put a nice amount of, of flux around here around around the the, the waveguide and put it away I've also seen that some guys are using um, solder paste for soldering uh, I've not tried this but this might actually be a good idea uh, maybe we are going to try this on the patch itself um, fire up the torch and crank up the, the heat a bit and then apply the, the flame um, around the, the feet so it heats up uh, evenly you will notice that the, the flux is going to melt away and just heat it for a bit don't touch it uh, be very careful here and if you after some seconds or minutes of heating up it depends on your blowtorch you can try to put solder to it and go around the feet and heat it up evenly on every side um, check that you don't make the connector too hot and uh, normally there is no problem but you don't have to to put the fire on it directly so here you can see that the plate is getting uh, hot enough we are just going to apply some solder around it if you use too much don't worry we will um, come for this later just apply enough of solder around the the area where the, the waveguide is in okay this looks good for now um, we will we will take some cloth now and try to clean the, the feet a bit and wrap it a few times so you get a bit of insulation and heat it up again so that the, the solder is being melted and now you can wipe away the excessive 
से उल्टा You can uh, turn off the blowtorch now. Uh, keep in mind that this part may seem cold, but it's actually not. Uh, don't touch it. And yeah, we will let it cool down for a moment. And after it is cool, we will um, solder the patch itself on it. Okay, now that everything is um, cold again, we are going to clean the reflector again. Make sure that it, there is no um, solder on the plate itself. And we are also going to clean the patch itself. Um, after this is finished, we will put the patch on the reflector or on the waveguide. Uh, make sure again that the cut edges are on the upper left and on the right downside. Align the hole for the um, inner conductor with the with the the inner conductor of the um, of the connector and then press it up. Take your um, alignment uh, shims, I call it, um, make sure they have three millimeters and place it on the or under the patch between the reflector and the patch and press it down so that everything is is um, everything is tight. Check the the um, the washers or the distances <clears throat> that everything is tight. Now you can um, clean the patch itself again. I've touched it. We want no grease or dirt on it. From my dirty fingers um, and now I will try to use um, soldering paste to solder it I've never tried it but um, I've seen guys on the internet do it and I will try this now this should this looks very very promising and I hope that my solder paste is not too dried out mm, this is not going so well yeah it's going a bit better now we're going to use enough solder paste and let's hope that this works um, I think a German ham radio operator um, posted this on Twitter um, a few months ago. Um, yeah, it, it, it was an ingenious idea. 
uh, when I when I saw it first, and I I'm really curious if it it actually works so well. I assume because he soldered um, a lot of of patch feeds back then. Um, I will check if I can make out who did it and then um, post um, his name and maybe a link to the picture in the info box or in the description box. Yeah, make sure that everywhere is enough solar paste applied. Oh, I'm really curious about this. Oh man, my solar paste is quite old. Okay, I think this is enough now. Let's close this and fire up the torch again. Heat everything up evenly and prepare something to push the patch down make sure that the, the inner waveguide is also hot because the solder has to bind um, on the waveguide and on the patch Yeah, you can see that the, the solder paste is um, melting now. <clears throat> yeah, we might need a little bit more flux on there. Just get it real nice and real hot and then we will apply a little bit um, more of the normal solar to it because I think I've um, used way too little uh, solar paste for this job. Here you can see that the, the solder is binding with the plate nicely, but the, the waveguide is not hot enough yet. Well, this is going to be a mess. Okay.
I noticed that the gas of my blowtorch is running low. Um, this can be an issue because the um, when you take a lot of gas out of it, um, the remaining gas inside gets cold. And because of that you have an issue with um, the amount of gas that comes out of the nozzle and the heat of the flame. So I'm going to change the canister inside and then I'll try again. I filled up the gas in the blowtorch and now we'll try again. Okay, and we have soldered everything uh, on. <clears throat> I suggest we are going to take uh, uh, a cloth to clean the excessive solder a bit. If we do this now, we there are some work later. Make it hot again so the solder um, is soft and liquid. And again, make it hot. Um, everything we clean now, we can, um, we don't need to clean later. Uh, make sure that there is not too much solar on it like here on this um, side there's still a little bit too much and if you have um, cleaned everything make it hot again use your wrench or the thing that you will want to use and place it on the feet um, hold it down a bit so you can make sure that the distances um, are pressed against everything and that the uh, that the measurement of the three millimeter will um, fit. I'm going to to solder the the inner connector of the of the the inner wire of the connector uh, onto the patch. Uh, I will try if this can be done with the with the flame. That looks good. Okay, and then I will push that again for a few minutes. Here I see I, uh, the inner connector is not is not soldered on properly, so I will heat it up again. This looks better now. We can clean off the, the excessive solder here. This looks okay. And now we will let this cool down. Um, I have to say this is the by far the messiest solder job I've done. Uh, it, it, you notice that the gas went out so I had to change the gas bottle. Um, you should do this before you start to solder. 
uh, we can clean that mess here um, up that's no problem uh, we will do this once everything is cold and then we will clean the feet and we will check if everything is okay and then we will measure it and then we're finished okay um, now we have um, let it cool for a bit we can take out the distances here and put it on the side um, for the excess solder we had um, um, wiped off we can scrape it off with a file it should go off quite easy If it doesn't come away that easy, you can either heat it up a bit or file it down. Um, now we can see we have a lot of um, flux on here. Again, um, we take a new towel and put some cleaning solution on it and clean it off also here in the reflector just clean it good um, check in between the, the the patch and the reflector there shouldn't there should not be uh, any excess solder especially not on the waveguide and also not on the the uh, the connector side if there is um something in it um i'd suggest you use a small um file and try to get it out everything that is in between there that is conductive um, will give you troubles later when um, adjusting the feet so we want everything everything out of there as you can see I have some um, some excessive solder on the, the under the connector um, hole I will file that off a bit so there is nothing that will mess up our um, VSVR later I'm going to file that out a bit here we have some dirt make sure that everything is as clean as possible <clears throat> yeah it looks quite nice now uh, you can also uh, take the, the paper towel wrap the file around it and go inside between the two plates with it so that everything in between is nice and clean you see here the the, the dirt we have got out of this is quite a lot and yeah this this is it for the the building phase You can use your scotch bright if you can find it. I can't find mine now. I have something here. And here's the other one. 
you can polish the feet here a bit so that it looks a bit nicer as i mentioned the soldering job i did today was not the best um, the problem was that the, the parts didn't get hot enough and the, the solder could not bind um, now it looks okay you can polish this as much as you like it um, I'm going to let that go here this is good enough for me um, yeah this is the finished patch feet dual patch feet um, we're going to to measure it later and adjust it a bit if needed um, normally there is not much adjustment needed but we will see how well it did um, you can attach the LMB on the back side um, I've seen different uh, types of attachments here um, some folks just drilled a, a hole in the in the cover of the LMB and put it inside there are a lot of 3d printed adapters out there i'm going to search for them and put it in the description and the front side of the back uh, of the patch feet um, needs some kind of um, dielectric lens to to bundle the the rf signals um, i've made some lenses um, some while ago this is a, a teflon lens <sighs> after the design of a ham from switzerland i guess um, this works quite okay but there are also 3d printable lenses out there and there are also lenses you can source from a so-called rocket lmb um this lens attaches uh, into the waveguide and um, the fit is quite wobbly here so i will um, go and, and bend this inwards a little so that it um, will will clamp on the on the lens we can do this right now Ah, that's good enough um, I just bend it in a little bit uh, you could also glue it on there but um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this feet after testing so I will just bend it in a little bit and make sure you don't bend it in too much so that you don't um, mess up our soldering joint and it's much better now i'll go for another round just a slight bit more <clears throat> okay that was too much obviously what the, f the hell uh, we go out a little bit yeah you can see here it's, it's just a little bit too much perfect now we have a, a snug fit and the feet is mechanically finished we will um, measure it and then we'll see how it performs okay now that we have finished everything up we are going to measure the feet um, with a impedance analyzer i'm using the n1201sa it's a chinese product but for my needs it works um, i'm going to use an adapter cable a small uh, a short adapter cable <clears throat> um, 
you should make sure that the cable is as um, short and as good as possible because the frequency we are using here is quite high with 2.4 gigahertz um, you should not use a lot of adapters and you should calibrate your vector analyzer before you and you should um, calibrate your vector analyzer with the cable attached so that you get an accurate reading i've already done this so let's see how this is going um the feet while measuring the feet should be um, not disturbed by anything so make sure you don't have a this uh, a metal thing that reflects a lot of the rf um, near you i'm going to start the analyzer and here is a normal reading i'm not sure if you can see this we have a vsvr from 1.125 um, about that this is very good everything under 1.5 is um, very good and doesn't need adjustment um, we can check the s11 curve here and um, this also looks very good we have two dips that's exactly as it should be and yeah um, it's a bummer i can't show you how to to adjust it but basically um if the the measurements are not that um not that good you can adjust the feet by um, um by pressing the tapered edges down a bit or lift them up a bit um, you will see that the frequency changes and also the uh, s11 reading changes when you do that i'm not going to do it here because everything is um, fine with the feet but basically you can grab two um, pliers and push down these edges or lift them up you can go with two screwdrivers beneath the reflector and the patch and when you twist them they will get pushed up a bit and with that method you can adjust the vsvr um, yeah this patch fit looks very good i'm surprised a little bit um because the soldering job was so bad at the beginning um yeah you can now attach the lmb on the back side and you can go and send and receive on q 100 um i will i will put links into the descriptions about the original um, post from the blog of UHS Setcom and I will post links in the description about the adapters for the LMB and I will also link to the, the guides I made I mean you can I've written a guide that describes basically that what we've done today and another guide that is um, um, that tells you how to um, build the plates themselves it's not very hard it's an easy job and I would go for it so thank you very much for your time I hope I could help you um, and could clarify some things and I also hope I could show you that assembling the feet 
is not that hard and it's quite easy and fun and if you appreciate the video um, it would be nice if you could um, subscribe to my channel it would help me a lot but I don't want to back so it's it's your decision you can do as you like um, thanks for your patience on this quite long video and I wish you a nice day